Right then, so Luke Ward of Scale Motor printed up these helmets for me some time back. I've got a larger scale, we reckon it's about 8 scale, and the smaller 12 scale. So the 12 scales are going in the car, 12, uh, the 8 scales are going to go next to it. If you remember, Luke also printed me the headset and the mixer that we put inside the car in earlier episode. They look great, added a nice bit of detail to it. So the idea is we have helmets in the car, either on the seat or on the floor, headsets are in there obviously, and then the larger helmet will do the display piece we put next to the car. So that was the whole idea around it. Resin 3D printed, designed by Luke from pretty much from scratch, I believe. He did a phenomenal job, and yeah, thank you very much, Luke. You're a legend. So because they're 3D printed, we've got to get them off the supports. So there's no simple, easy way of doing this. So we just need to go and through and snip them all off as carefully as we can. We've got some very delicate detail on this. We've got the mouthpieces. There's some wiring built in. We've got the um, braces and buckles underneath and what have you. So we need to be very, very careful on what we're doing. And obviously things like the peak are very, very delicate. Now, I will admit these are not technically the correct helmets for the stage the rally car was on. Um, they were wearing black full face helmets with no visors, I believe they were. They look awful. I'm not putting them in my car. I have pictures of you are cankering wearing these helmets on different stages. So, yeah, they're not the correct one. I don't need to be told they're the wrong ones. I already have been told when I already know. Um, but I'm doing it because these look a lot better to me. I'm not going to be perfect. I'm going to do as good a job as I can. And that's all you can ever do. So with all the back piece off, and this is the larger one now, I'm going to show a mixture of the smaller and the larger ones being worked on throughout. I'm not going to pick on one in particular. Uh, we're not going to beat around the bush showing every single painting step along the way. I'm going to go through and just cut out all the drivel and what have you. Um, I'm just get straight to the point, as I try and do always. Um, so yeah, just go through. Be very careful. Just be careful what you're cutting. Larger bits like this, once you get them off, they will snap off. It does come off quite easy. Just make sure you're not snapping off any detail parts you don't remove from the inside. But there we go. Once we've got it all off, we then need to sand back where the support struts have been. So we're using a couple of UMP sanders. We've got the 240 sponge and the 220 1200 black one there below as well. I'm just going to go through it now. Make sure you've got some kind of dust mask on. And you should be wearing gloves, really. I'm a bit of an idiot. It is resin dust. You can have an allergic reaction to this stuff, but definitely don't breathe it in. Make sure you've got some sort of dust mask on. You don't need a respirator. A dust mask is more than enough with this stuff. Um, but just go around, smooth it all off, get rid of any support strut uh, remnants that are left behind, and do as good a job as you can cleaning it up. So, nice print by Luke. They're actually uh, very, very nice. A few flaws to remove, but hey, that's what it is when you get custom-made models. Uh, like I say, Luke added some awesome detail to this. They're absolutely fantastic. So, been looking forward to doing these and also kind of putting it off. But as the build is done, these are kind of centerpieces to go in the car with the headset. So, they need doing. But just look at the wire and how delicate that is. How perfectly molded into the... Uh, the printer is, the uh, the buckles underneath and the strap. Absolutely fantastic. All the padding inside. We've got the piping around the outer edge, the microphone. Uh, just awesome. Absolutely fantastic job. So, yeah, if you need anything like this, go over and ask Luke Scale Motor. He might be a bit busy as a full-time job now, but I'm sure he'll get around to it if he can. Like I say, go around, carefully clean them all up. Using your sanders of choice. And once you're happy, move on to the next one. And I would come back and have a little look because there's bound to be something you've missed. But again, just be very gentle on parts not to break them because it is quite delicate, the resin. Very highly detailed, but also very delicate. So take your time. Don't go too crazy with the sanders. And get it cleaned up as good as possible. So like I say, a mixture of the big and the little ones. Uh, they are exact copies of each other, just a different scale. And the funny story is, the bigger one was originally printed to be the right size. And none of us noticed, not Luke, not me, nobody. When we handed them over, uh, this is the original proper scale, and nobody noticed at all. <laughs> so it was only Jamie when he started working, I was like, oh, these are a bit big. And you're like, oh my God, yes, they are a bit, aren't they? So funny story, but hey-ho, uh, we've got the right scale now. 
Once they're all cleaned up, I've got a nice piece of kitchen paper with some UMP airbrush cleaner on, and I'm going to go around and wipe all the dust off. Any contaminants that may still be on the resin, give it all a good clean up in preparation for primer. So just take your time. Again, be careful with the tissue. Don't be ripping any wires off or snapping any resin. Just take your time. Go around and get as clean as you possibly can. Because if there's any residue here, you may struggle getting paint to stick to it. Now we need to mount these. So I'm going to drill holes in strategic places where they can't be seen. My little Herzo battery powered drill from Amazon. So I'm using cocktail sticks on the smaller helmets. And I've got one of my larger cotton buds, which are taking the cotton off for the larger one because it's too heavy. My helmet weighs too much to be held by a thin stick. We'll leave it there, hey? But the little ones can be held with cocktail sticks quite easily. So in the spray booth, we've got some Tamiya White Fine Surface Primer. It's been decanted, off-gassed, thinned about 20% with Tamiya Lacquer Thinner and Retarder. And we're going through the iWatt HPC Plus at about 18 PSI. And we're going to put down several coats of primer until we've got a nice white base coat. So don't go mad on the first couple of coats, but on the last few, you can start putting it down a bit wetter. It does have microfilling capabilities, which there will be imperfections on the resin. It is a resin print, so it is what it is. We'll make the best of it we can. Um, I'm just going to go around and prime it all. Get a nice white coat down of primer. Let that dry, and we can come back in with the base colour later on. Now, I did contemplate using the Lancia colour, and I thought, no, you know what? We'll go with a different white. So we're going to go with TS26 from Tamiya. Uh, exactly the same on a larger helmet as well. It's obviously you need a bigger surface pattern if i've just been painting the larger helmet i think i would use a spray can because it's quite a big piece of resin this to cover primer's dried a few hours and we've got some ts26 spray can again decanted off gas thinned about 20 percent with uh, tammy lacathin and retarder through the same airbrush the Arrow hpc plus 18 psi and we're going to put several coats down till we get a nice gloss white bright white finish because that's what i want on uh, the helmets. Now, I'm not going to put any washes on this or anything. I'm just going to leave them pretty clean. Uh, I have got some decals as well. I planned ahead for this a while back. So we'll get to that in a little bit. But with a couple of coats of the TS26, um, getting some base colour down and then coming at the end of a wetter coat, we can get a nice um, gloss coat of white. We are going to gloss coat it as well because I want these nice and shiny. Um, but we want to get a nice base colour down to begin with so the tamiya ts paints and primers are absolutely fantastic for this a little bit of research this is the picture i've got of yuha in his helmet so i bought some martini decals from a site online um, now when i first looked at it i thought oh there's all different sizes there two of each or four of each no i was wrong there's two of each so one of the helmets is going to have to have a slightly bigger uh, martini logo on no real drama about the smaller ones and i have some peltor decals that alan parker very kindly created and printed for me some time back so cheers for alan you're a legend home printed decals which work fine and then using that picture reference which is the only picture i've got of this helmet at all uh, and kind of just lining up the decals as per the picture using that as reference um, and then getting the decals down not bad decals these they went on quite well it took forever to come off the backing paper i should have used warm water really but I didn't. Uh, I've got some UMP. I think it's strong. There we go. We're going straight in for strong. Um, we're going to see how it reacts to the strong, which it did react really well, actually. That's all I needed on these. Uh, the decals themselves, I forget where I got them from now. I've completely forgotten. I had a brain fart. I've forgotten where I got them from. I got all the metal badges for the cars from as well. I forget where it was now. Uh, if I remember, I'll go back through my payment history and try and find the site I got them from. And these are the Peltor decals. So these are home printed by Alan and designed. Uh, we've used these decals before on various projects. Uh, the 12 scale Skyline had one. And they work great. You do have to trim them as close as you can to get rid of all the carrier film. But they're laid down absolutely perfect. And they look great. Now, no real reference to any other decals on the helmet because I've got no other shots. But... A lot of them have a martini logo in the center of the helmet as well on top. And due to some peer pressure from Dan Croak, who said that Yuha was sponsored by Marlborough, 
and he quite often had a decal on the um, a Marlboro sticker on the peak of the helmet. I opted to pop one of those on as well. So going around with the strong and now the extra strong, we have got these well and truly in place. And then some teeny weeny Marlboro decals onto the peak of the helmet. And again, that's set in place as before. Remove all the moisture, hit it with a strong and extra strong to get it all in place. Pretty simple, simple decal scheme. We've still got to clear coat it and then detail paint it all. But they look all right, don't they? Look, they don't look too bad. Laid down pretty well. Not bad at all. Quite happy with those. So planning ahead pays off because I already had the decals. In the spray booth now, we've got some Mr. Hobby Super UV Cut Gloss, which again, decanted, thinned about 20% Mr. Hobby Leveling Thinner, through the same iWatch HPC Plus 18 PSI, and we're going to put down a couple of tack coats, we already have, and now we're coming in with the wetter coats to get our gloss look. So, yes, again, nice glossy finish is what we want. You need to get those tack coats down first, or as you'll eat your decals alive. Mr. Hobby is a bit more forgiving than Tamiya TS-13 and the like. But we want a nice, glossy, clear finish on these. And there we go. Nice, gloss finish. Not too bad at all. So a quick look around, a quick check. Looks pretty good to me. Decals are all fine. All the decals have been eaten alive. So that is good news. Let's have a look. These are all looking good as well. You can see some paint in the background off gassing as well. Quite often do that. Just leave the lid off but on top. If you have a decan paint, leave the lid on but not fasten down is my top tip. Because if you fasten it on, the paint bottle will explode. Don't leave the lid off because it will evaporate quicker and you might get dust in there. That's dried now overnight in a nice warm room. And the clear coat's dried. Um, we're going to brush paint on some Vallejo model colour black now. It's been thinned with a drop or two of water. We've got a nice Tamiya flat brush and with some careful painting. We're going to paint all the padding inside right up to the edge. We're then going to paint around the outer, what would be leather, pleather, whatever it is, uh, strip in some gloss black from Revol. Uh, the beauty, again, I've used water-based paint on lacquers. Is they wipe off, and I definitely didn't lick that cotton bud. And I definitely don't lick it again now. No, definitely did not lick that. And if anyone thinks I did, you're a liar. But yes, moisten the cotton bud in some way. And you can wipe off the water-based paint really easy off the lacquer. It's a great tip. So you don't need to be too careful. Same on the little ones as well. But obviously you need to be a bit more precise where you're putting your paint. So yeah, we're going to gloss black the trim around the outer edge. We're going to Tamiya semi-gloss black the strap underneath. We're going to semi-gloss enamel paint the microphone boom wiring and then put some silver paint on the buckles as well. And hopefully we'll get a half-decent looking helmet and you can all sit back and go, ooh, look at Paul's helmet. Because, yes, that's what we do because we're strange. Anyway. Uh, as you can see, we're moistening uh, cotton buds by not licking them and wiping off any excess paint. So you don't need to be ultra careful. The only time you will be is if you're using lacquer paint on lacquer or enamel because it can reactivate the clear or the paint underneath. But when we're using water-based paints like this, it will literally wipe back off. But definitely don't lick it. Don't lick it. Revel Aquacolor Gloss Black now we have. It's been shaken within an inch of its life. And we're going to very carefully go around and do the piping that goes around the edge. So a nice steady hand needed here. I've got my optivisor on. And I'm just going to carefully go around the whole thing. We don't want to get any gloss black on the black I already put down. And we certainly don't want to get any of it on the white if we can help it. Of course, we can wipe it off because the aqua colour by its name is water-based. But the more precise we can be, the less cleanup we've got. Got a Winsor Newton Series 7, I think it's a 01. Nice precise brushes. They are my detail brush paints of uh, brushes of choice. And load the paint up, but don't leave it loaded up. Load the brush up and then wipe off the excess. And then following the edges, just very carefully go around. It's a little bit boring today. I'm not the biggest fan 
of loads of brush painting. Don't mind doing the odd thing. I am live there currently talking to everybody as well. But you'd be absolutely stuck trying to mask this. So brush painting is sometimes the only option. And it is kind of nice to go back to brush painting. Um, I don't think I like to do this full time. I definitely enjoy my airbrushing a lot more. And then we'll repeat that on the larger one as well. We're going up to a... It's a bigger brush this one. Actually, it might have been a double zero last time. This is a double oh one now, possibly. We've gone up a brush size. And again, just gonna go around and carefully brush paint everything on. With that done, we've got some Tamiya LP5. No, it's not. Tell a lie, it's not LP5, it's LP3 matte black, is what this is. I put a drop or two of Tamiya lacquer thinner in there. Just to thin it out. And we're going to brush paint this. It's a little bit too thin, so I'm going to grab a little bit more paint. Pop it in the lid. Again, wipe the brush off so we haven't got too much on there. Tamiya's are not the best paints for brush painting. But if you load the brush up and don't keep going over it, they actually brush paint pretty well. I went with matte on this because it's it'll be like a what like a webbing uh nylon webbing strap on it so i thought it'd be a bit more matte than anything plus adds a bit of contrast to the other parts as well so nice and simple and again repeat that on uh the other one the other helmets too and then we've got some x18 enamel from tamia now and we're going to paint the wiring and the microphone boom in this as well. These are fantastic paints for brush painting. Can't recommend these enough. They are so pigment heavy. They cover like first time round. The coverage is fantastic. They self level well. For enamels, they actually dry pretty quick. You're not going to be handling them very quick. But you can paint over them and maybe attach a few parts quite quick. Uh, but yeah, I've not recently bought these. So getting used to them. But really enjoy them for detail and parts. And uh, yeah, like I say, the paint coverage is phenomenal off them. Like I say, some careful painting. We can get everything painted up really nice. See these awkward little wires that are microscopically close to the helmet. And there we go. I was holding my breath then. <gasps> Ooh, there we go that's a relief all done and there we go and then finally the buckles underneath we've got some chrome silver x11 again from the enamel range i'm just going to carefully brush paint that not getting it on the black and again coverage absolutely fantastic i really can't recommend these enough not readily available in the UK. Sadly, I had to order these from Europe. Not the most expensive paint either. Two, three pounds, having a cup of tea. Um, but overall, uh, beautiful paint. And there we go. Paint all needs to dry. There's a few ways to touch up. But for the most part, oh, let's go. We've got some good tonal variation on the blacks. Happy that gloss coat. The decals went down well. And my bigger helmet looks really good. Quite happy with that. Not too bad at all. The little ones look great as well. So there we go. They're going to look great in the vehicle. I'm going to put one in the vehicle and one on the roof, I think, is how I'm going to display them. So they look really good. And then a stand for the big one. So I had this clear acrylic rod I've had for forever. So I cut off a few inches, cleaned up the end. It's a little bit too long. So I'm just going to say glue it inside the helmet. Like so. So it's a little bit long. So we'll just trim it off with the razor saw. Cut a half inch off it or so. 15 mil. Clean it up again. So just going to do a bit of a test fit. And I was looking around everywhere thinking, what can I mount this on? Something round and perfect. And then I thought clear would be better. And I thought, you know what? A medicine cup lid will do us just fine. So they're pretty clear. Not totally, but it'll certainly be enough not to be noticeable so we drilled a quick hole through that i've got one of the screws that comes with tamiya kits model factory hero kits etc and i'm going to drill out the plastic part well it's all plastic of the rod and then a quick test fit of the screws we can see how it fits together 
and then screw all together. I'm a little bit off camera, I do apologize. But there we go, there's a screwed onto its base and a quick test fit where it needs to sit. There we go, let me chuck a little dab of Seagull on the top. There we go, and then carefully line it up, drop it down, hold it for a second or two, and there we go, glued in place on its base. And there we are, there's our two smaller helmets and the larger one on its little display stand, which uh, I think looks all right. I think the helmets have turned out pretty good. They're not perfect. It's as good as I can do, but I'm happy with them and they look fantastic in the car. Thanks for Luke Ward for printing these and the headsets for me as well, mate. They look great. Um, there's probably a few more detail and parts I could do to them, but I'm happy with this, happy with how they are. Um, Martini decals are good. The Peltor decals that Alan did for me were great as well. So they don't look too bad at all. And a bit of peer pressure from Dan Croak. Maybe put the Marlboro decal on as well. So cheers for that, Dan. Thank you. Sounds sarcastic, but I'm being sincere. My base isn't quite straight there, but it does sit straight when it's in place. And then with it in the car, there we go. So that one on the passenger footwell will stay there. The driver's one will go on the roof eventually. I just put them on there to grab a couple of pictures. And then I grabbed a video as well. So I've got a nice video of all the car open. It is in portrait mode, I do apologise because I did do it as a short on YouTube, showing everything open. You can see my poor turntable there struggling to turn this monster kit. But there we go, there's all the bonnet open, all the engine detail. I came out of this, really enjoyed this build. The last part of the build's up if you've not seen it. There's our interior with the helmets. There's a lot boot with a makeshift stand for holding it open. Uh, like I say, all shuts perfect. On it stays up a little bit at the front. That's one of the flaws I had on the kit, but it is what it is. I'm happy all the doors shut straight and the boot lid sits straight. And uh, yeah, the helmets just look superb. They just add that final little je ne sais quoi to it, which is French for broom handle. Uh, they just add a little bit more of a touch to it. Uh, and with a larger one on top, you can see... We were a little bit off with that scale originally, weren't we? Just a touch. And there's my display case. It's above my shelf. It is well and truly secured in place. Don't worry about that. It's screwed down on a very sturdy shelf. With its case on, we've got the helmets there and my little 164 Lancia Delta next to it. Um, and yeah, there we are. There's the helmets in place and done. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.